Hey, let's talk about eBay sell-through analytics, the most exciting thing for everyone. I'm sure you want to spend your weekend learning all about this. eBay is great, gives you tons of stuff, tons of way to sell things, tons of analytics, but what it doesn't really do is give you an accurate way of tracking large volumes of items across months or years uh, when there are varying strategies you use to refresh your listing. Typically, that's going to be ending and sell similar um, or other things of that ilk. Uh, when you do that, it gives it a new activation date, a new start date. So if you're tracking sell-through rate by uh, by listing ID, you might uh, think something sold immediately when it only sold after being listed for two years and then one relist, um, which would actually be 25 months, not one month. That's why it's important to have a master SKU database. Uh, I had to make this myself. Uh, the SKU column is the postcard box, I call them. They're not actually boxes. They're just tabs of paper inside boxes that delineate batches of postcards I have scanned. And then this month year column, I have to fix these six. I just, <laughs> I should have fixed it before I uh, screen recorded. Uh, these are going to be the month that was listed initially. So all the co uh, postcards in PC3, even if I end them and relist them, or rather sell similar to them, eBay, you can sell similar and relist same end result for the most part, but um, selling similar gives a different different ID. Anyways, you can do all that stuff and still know when it initially was listed. So you can uh, test out strategies a lot better and see the results a heck of a lot better. Uh, again, I had to make this myself. There's not like an exportable report, unlike the next two tabs that are exportable reports, but I did have to clean them up considerably. And I'll post the code that I have somewhere. Um, so where if you want to look at it, or if you want to use this, it's pretty tailored to what I'm doing, but you can go through it and see the thought process and apply it to your own. Um, like for example, if you were to uh, have a store with tons of video games and every video game had its own SKU and those were replenishable, you would probably want to have a system like this in place. Um, if you did not have the ability to sell as out of stock because I'm kind of getting into the weeds here, but if you have a, a listing that is um, a quantity listing and it's replenishable, then when you sell everything, it says out of stock and it keeps that item ID alive, it charges you for it, eBay does, but it keeps it alive. Whereas if you don't want to pay uh, to have those out of stock listings on your account, um, then you would want to use something like this to track the initial date that any SKU was made regardless of if it's actually active, you know, active in quotes um, on eBay. Active listings is a report you can download off of the reports tab in your store. I don't know. I might get the tab names wrong, but just if this interests you, you're going to have to go into your, your seller dashboard and check out all the reports that there are. You can find them pretty easily. You can see uh, my initial attempts at... Um, AI postcard names, for lack of a better term, was pretty rough. Pretty rough. And I actually deleted all of PC Box 2 and 3 because they were just nonsense. Um, it has since considerably gotten better. You see I've got 35,000 listings active. These are just my postcards. Uh, I pulled all the active listings, then I filtered it out with um, a Google script. Again, that I'll post that somewhere. Uh, but you can see much cleaner now. Uh, I've actually got about 40,000 listed. I listed, I only have data through the end of April in this spreadsheet right now. And I listed about 5,000 um, on May 1st, which is pretty cool. I've got 20,000 coming in. I like, I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of postcard stuff. So stick around if you want to learn about postcards or more importantly about how to run uh, the business analytics, the business intelligence of your eBay business. So we have active listings. It's been reformatted to just only give postcards. Uh, and the way I did that was by sorting by eBay store category. Just that's the long story short. Uh, here's all my orders over the past, since, since I think, well, since January 1st. Although technically I should have done it since January 12th because that was the first day I listed my first postcard on eBay. But I do, I do it from January 1st just because um, there are, let's see, over the past few months I've sold 688 postcards and that is from January 12th until April 30th. Um, 
Average sale price is about 10 bucks. So I've sold almost $7,000 in postcards uh, of individual postcards. This, is not, this doesn't actually include any lots that I may have sold, uh, but individual postcards over the past like three months, which is pretty good, I think. Um, these are important because we want to know when the item sold to calculate our sell-through rate. So we have the master SKU that says PC7579 was listed probably in April. So even if the date listed date is different, which I, I probably don't even need to have this category or this column here. I can probably take it away. But I just wanted to really show the data that we're pulling to figure this stuff out. And don't worry, <laughs> I'm around, I'm, I'm, it's, it's gonna be done soon. So we have our master SKU that tracks when everything was listed regardless of what eBay thinks. We have active listings to give us an idea of how many postcards get listed each month. And then we have orders to get an idea of how many sell each month and what box they come from. So we do some computer magic and we say, okay, I want to figure out what my, uh, first of all, how many postcards I list a month. Uh, and then from that, figure out how many sell. And then let's say I list a thousand in January, a hundred sell. Then I take that 900 and compound it into the next month's inventory because listings stay active. That's the idea here, at least. I'm not going to be, the reason I made that choice is because I'm not going to be uh, converting Reme to auction. But we're just going to make the assumption that listings stay active. And if I do end up removing a, a, a box, a PC SKU box, then I'll, I'll handle that accordingly. Uh, we want to figure out aggregate totals uh, of all the months before. We want to figure out how many sell each month. And we want to figure out what our monthly sell-through rate is. It's really important. How much of the total inventory sells every month? That is what I want to know. I want to figure that out. I want to figure out uh, if I have 100,000 postcards listed, what do I have to do to keep that at half a percent monthly sell-through rate? Because half a percent monthly sell-through rate of 100,000 postcards is 500 postcards. At 10 bucks a pop, you're making five grand revenue. You're making about $4,000 profit with the way I'm buying them. And that's just an arbitrary benchmark. I mean, realistically, I'd like to have probably close to 360,000. I think that would be a way to make like 10 grand, more than that, about 15 grand a month, um, and only work like 10 hours a week. And ideally hire someone to do the, the postcard um, picking and shipping. But you can, I can't do that unless I have a really strong idea of how many postcards I have to list additionally each month um, to sell 0.5% because I'm getting ahead of myself. But there is a very strong correlation between listing stuff and selling stuff on eBay. And I will go over that. I'll go over that in a separate video because the it kind of is a little bit different. But just so you know, this tab down here, core, stands for correlation. And that's where I do uh, another level of, um, of, eBay, of EB, eBay voodoo. So here's the results tab. These are all my inactive SKUs. These are all the SKUs that I have not sold a postcard in at all. Not very good, right? Um, as, it, as I get closer to the end, they become a bit, bit, more, bit more sparse. But initially, what I should do is go through and rerun all the titles and descriptions and all of these initial postcards because my algorithm for creating titles is so much better than it was initially, you know, three or four months, whenever January 12th was. It's May 3rd, so that many months ago, four months ago. Um, so much better and works so much faster. So we can see in January, I listed about 5,000 postcards and I sold 56 of them. That's from like January 15th until the end of the month. Um, I, I listed a lot at the end of the month. So I bought like a thousand in the er, early January. And then I created the, you know, the, the basic use case where I said, okay, I can automate this. And then by the end of the month, I had listed quite a bunch. And that's why my sell through rate the next month, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see, uh, is so the first month sell through rate 1.13%. Second month, I had about 15,000 listed by the end of the month, 210 sold, 1.45%, pretty good sell-through rate. 
which was a 128% increase in my sell-through rate. Uh, after that month, I kind of did not list that many at all in March. I kind of hit the brakes. I was doing other work stuff. Uh, I wanted to see what would happen if I listed less postcards. And as you can assume, I sold less postcards, about a 0.92% sell-through rate, only listing 5,000 postcards. Um, and again, I'll make another video that goes into the actual correlation between when you list stuff, what impact does that have? Uh, because it is a pretty sizable impact. But as you can see, listing less, I sold less, and a lot of this inventory from the first month is bad listing inventory. So of course it'll sell less. What's scary is uh, is how drastically that sell-through rate dropped. It almost dropped in half. Uh, it My sell-through rate in this month, in March, was 63.45% of my sell-through rate the month before. Uh, and that is unsustainable, right? If you keep having halving, if you keep halving, if, if you <laughs> decrease by that amount every month, you're going to have nothing. You're, it's going to, you know, be zero, um, which is why the next month, April, when I listed about 12,000 postcards, I sold 236, 0.74% uh, sell through rate, but that was a much lower drop off in the month before. And then, um, I've, I've got, I, it d took the total listings as of May 1st. So I had 34,000, uh, as of May 1st at like two in the morning. Cause that's when I pulled this report initially. Uh, and then this, so this column, we've got how the sell through rate, uh, differs by year. And then in, in this column, we have like the magnitude of the change. So it halved basically, and then, uh, actually it decreased at a slower rate than the month before. So my hope is that after one, you know, maybe by this point, eight months or 10 months or whatever that is, we see a pretty consistent trend of like 0.5% sell through rate. If I list like 10,000 a month, that's what I'm tracking. That's how I'm tracking it. If you found this informative at all or interesting, subscribe because this is what I find interesting. And this is its own, you know, little self contained business.